Hey everyone, it's been a while. Due to busy schedules, I wasn't able to create a video last week, but I'm finally back now. So today's video will be packed with really cool stuff. I've been running a lot of tests and prompts comparing Dell E3 against all of our biggest AI image contenders. And honestly, Dell E generations are top notched. So in this video, we will be exploring Dell E's image generation capabilities. And do stick with me to the end of the video as I will share two reliable ways that I've found to create consistent characters in ChatGPT's Dell E. So let's begin. Okay, before I start experimenting, there are currently two ways to use Dell E3. So you can either use it on Bing Chat over here, where you just go to bing.com and search for Bing Chat. It is free of charge. Or you use it with ChatGPT Plus and choose Dell E over here. All right, so both tools generate great images, but they can produce quite different outcomes. So one thing to take note is that in Bing Chat, the advantage you have is that not only it's free of charge, but you will be able to send your image generation into what we call the Microsoft Designer, and you can further customize on it like that, right? So I've created a rabbit here with like very colorful ribbons, right? So I could do it into other formats, into a painting, into a PowerPoint and so on. So I can even upload image and stuff. I haven't really tried Microsoft Designer to its fullest extent yet. So I'm not very sure how it works, but you are able to do that using the Bing chat. It's a little bit like the Adobe Firefly, right? But probably with less customization options. But maybe I can do another video on this some other day, right? So this customization options is not available in ChatGPT's version of Dell E. Nonetheless, I will be using the ChatGPT version today to test its accuracy and consistency. All right, so I'll start off with something really simple. I will just be using the prompt that you see earlier in Bing, right? Which is just to show you a very quick demonstration of how ChatGPT is able to very easily recognize your prompts and recognize your description of the prompt, right? So over here, I have with me a very simple prompt to generate a cute baby rabbit cartoon, right? Wearing a unique red, blue, green ribbon on the head, right? So the keyword here is red, blue, green. So I'm expecting it to be a ribbon that is with these three colors on the head, right? So let's see if Dell E in ChatGPT is able to give me accurate image of that. Yep, so there you have it. All four images that you see here accurately depicts the generation or the image that I have described, right? So ribbon on the head, right? All four is the same, colorful. Some don't really have the color blue, especially the last two over here. It doesn't have all oh, the, the, these three images over here, right? It doesn't have the blue color. This image it does have a little bit. Maybe on the first one, the eyes are blue, right? So basically they are cute. They are rabbits, right? So I'll say it's not too bad, right? On the first attempt. And then I will move on to our second try, which is now I will take one level ahead. I want to generate a realistic photo of a person sitting at an outdoor eatery at a table with a beer bottle and a glass of water and two cups of coffee waiting for someone. So again, there are like several key phrases over here that I'm hoping the AI is able to pick up and give it to me in detail in the image itself, right? So let's run this and see whether the AI will generate exactly what I've asked, right? Which is table with a beer bottle, glass of water, two cups of coffee waiting for someone. And there must be a person in the image as well. Okay, so you can see here, it generates four different images. It gives me different artwork style, right? So there are realistic shots. There are very colorful illustrations. There is also like water painting kind of style right? or oil painting kind of style. So I asked for coffee and it gave me the coffee here, but... I kind of asked for two cups of coffee, glass of water and beer. So it gives me a beer bottle. So it's somewhat there. This second image is more accurate, right? Two cups of coffee, beer, and also a glass of water. So it's pretty awesome, right? The first one, yep, maybe somewhere there. The third one is also good, but it's using a different artwork. So I didn't specify here that I want a realistic shot. So they gave me four different variations, which is mm, pretty cool. Right, so from here we can see just based off the first two prompts, right, they are able to very accurately create images based on my description. So we can go even more detailed for that, right? We can even do words right now, which is really awesome because if you are designing logos, it will be very helpful. So in the third example, I'm just going to use a prompt, simple prompt of a man spring graffiti word that says peace on the wall. So on I, I've already run all these experiments before, so I do know that it will work, but just for demonstration's sake, I'm just going to rerun some of these, right? And you can see that it is very consistent, like out of 9 out of 10 of my prompts, it really accurately creates that image based on the description, right? 
So it can be anything, right? Anything that I would say probably because of the AI's capabilities of recognizing context, right? It is able to very accurately generate images like that based on our prompts, right? So over here, we talk about the word peace, right? It's pretty impressive, especially the third one here. It's really a person spraying and the word peace, right? Same for the first one. Um, and it give me a different styles again, so which is pretty awesome, right? Um, now we will just up the challenge a little bit more. I just want to really just show you that it is able to generate words in more detail, right? So since my YouTube channel does not have any logos yet, why not let's give it a try and get ChatGPT or Dell E to generate a logo for me, right? So I've written up this prompt. My YouTube channel, Sunny Learns AI or Initials SLA is to share latest AI happenings, right? Please design a logo for my YouTube channel using my channel name or initials. Its dimensions should be 800 by 800 pixels. So over here, this prompt, what we are testing is not really on accuracy because I didn't really give it a lot of details, right? I, I didn't tell it like what type of logo I want. Do I want a vector? Or do I want text to be in there followed by an, an image or an icon, right? I, I didn't specify anything because I think the earlier examples we have been testing out a lot on accuracy already. Right now, I just want to see, right, like how creative Dell E can be. So I'm just going to leave it up to them to design that logo for me, right? So I'm just going to run this prompt. And let's see, let's see if they are able to create like very creative variations of a logo that can represent my YouTube channel. Okay, there you have it. First glance, I think it's not too bad. They give me four different variations. Some are vector, some are like, you know, a mixture of like different illustrations. A uh, mixture of like different colors. So the third one is pretty cute, right? They created a, like a very smiley sun looking icon over here. And off my head, I think the spelling really works very well. They spell out the name correctly. But of course, I'm lucky, right? Because this iteration, I've got it to spell it out correctly. Not every run the AI is able to generate the correct spelling. Sometimes they just spell with an extra letter and things like that. So you could get it to rerun it, right? So I think this is pretty cool here. There's different types of variations, vector styles to ones with icons and also some with like a little bit more of a 3D effect, right? On the background. So I think this is pretty cool, but maybe let's take a next step further. What I'm going to do here is that I also need a YouTube banner, right? On the main channel page. So I'm going to carry on the prompt to now test for consistency. Now, I really like the third one very well. So maybe I want it to generate a banner based off this third image to see whether I'm able to create a consistent image or artwork that is very much similar to this third image, right? So now I just want a banner, right? Okay, I'm going to use this prompt using image three, which is this third image, design a YouTube banner with logo three on the left. So I want this logo to be printed on the left side. So a little bit of some details and these details also includes dimensions, right? Which is the banner size of the YouTube homepage, right? So it's uh, 2560 by 1440 pixels. Let's run this and see if it's able to pick out the third image from here and print it on the left side, along with some other, I don't know, some other designs based on their creativity. Okay, and the dimensions, hopefully they are able to abide to that because 800 by 800 is square. So the above examples should not have any issues, right? But right now I want uh, 2560 by 1440, which is more of a landscape longer image, okay? So we have it here, but it seems like they are also printing out the numbers and the logo also don't look like the one generated above here, right? Which is logo three. Please do not include the dimensions in the image. The description did mention that the logo is positioned on the left, but it seems like it's still in the center. Okay, so I guess it's not able to really keep up the consistency just like that, right? So I'm I'm having an error here right now. It's not able to generate the image properly. Maybe I'll just change up my prompt and give it one last try. Using image tree, design a YouTube banner with logo tree positioned on the left. Let me just change this up a little bit. Dimensions should be on the right. You can dimensions the image should be. All right, so I've changed up the prompt a little bit using image tree, design a YouTube banner with logo tree position on the left. On the right, you can add anything you want based on your creativity. Dimensions of the image should be 2560 by 1440 pixels. Okay, I'm just going to recreate this prompt. Let's see what it gives us. I'm hoping it's generating somewhat similar to the image tree above that is created this sunny logo here. 
but let's see right because so far i wasn't able to really replicate consistent image so it's still printing out the dimensions i think that's because of the prompt they think that the numbers should be printed in as well and they're just literally taking the logos and just adding it in right um they did very well for the spelling but i think this is really quite a failed attempt so in terms of creativity wise i just feel that delhi maybe it's not so strong yet you would have to be very specific in your prompts like exactly you want it on the left on the right did very well in terms of like the exact thing that i've mentioned right because I've said position it on the left, right? And on the right, just be creative, right? So they just add some random stuff on the right. Book itself also, they didn't really follow the previous one, which is that cute little smiley face, right? So yeah, so I think this is one of the key issues that I also found when I'm running all the different tests in the past, right? So uh, creativity-wise, I think Meet Journey still do very well. But of course, I do not have time to showcase Meet Journey right now. Maybe in another video, I might just do a comparison across all the image generation giants, right? But for now, Dell E accuracy, I think it's really pretty good. Generation of image is also great, just probably on the creativity end that you will need to be very specific with the prompts. Okay, so that's it. I have found a couple of solutions for consistency. Dell E, I think for the previous experiments that I've just showed, consistency is not really Dell E's forte. Uh, but there are some workarounds in order to create more consistent images. So I have over here a post by Anu in Twitter. I will put all these links in the description below so that you can visit it and take a look at yourself. She has created a very simple custom instruction to place identifiers on each generation, right, with numbers so that you could then use those numbers to blend images together or to create similar images between two variations. So like, for example, here, I've run one example on a steampunk cat. Okay, so if I scroll upwards, you will see that my prompt here is, is a steampunk cat, octane render hyper-realistic. So this is what it generates. Pretty good generations. I think these are unique additional prompts. You need to know what type of styles and things like that. You can't just put in one word and let it generate on its own based on its creativity. You would have to be very specific. So it did a great job in the generations, but what happens if, uh, let's say, I want to print this cat somewhere else, right? So I went on to do the same uh, prompt that we used earlier, which is the graffiti word for peace on the wall, right? And it gives me like really four very cool images. So what happens is that every time I did a prompt, the custom instructions will set an identifier for each image, right? So in this case, since I've used the exact same prompt as Anu, right, it will tell me that oh, uh, image 1 is now x1, x2 is image 2, x3 is image 3, x4 is image 4, right, and, and the rest, right. So the more you generate, it will, the number will just keep running, it will add up. So what I did here is use the exact same prompt as what Anu have shown. I asked ChatGPT whether it can incorporate x1, the steampunk cat, as an art on the graffiti on x8, right. So I'm taking this x1 right and i want it to blend with x8 over here okay which is this guy spraying this logo and um, and the cool thing is uh I, I did two iteration right so this is the second one right it gives me a pretty good looking cat with the same person all right if you notice it's kind of like this almost the same person right in the same color in the same clothing in the same type of clothing right so this is the first prompt that i've run also same hoodie guy right but in this case because it didn't take the cat right so that's where i started adding in a lot more specific prompts just like what i've mentioned it will need a lot of guidance for you to get the art that you want if you just let it think on its own it's just going to give you something that is more minimal right but on the second prompt i added in the steampunk cat right and also the graffiti art okay so that's what it gives me and it tells me its identifier is x9 so I just asked for more variation of X9 and it gives me even more cooler looking cats, graffiti cats, right? In the fourth one here, we not only see the steampunk cat, but we also see the word peace, right? Um, and then the logos here. So it's pretty awesome, right? So if you take a close up look, right, the facial, it's all done pretty well. So some of like this person's face as well, very sharp looking. It's just that the skin is flawless. That's my only complaint. It looks realistic. It looks great. This person as well, right? So... I would say generations are top notch. Then that's method one, right? So method one is by using custom instructions, we can set an identifier, right? There is a second method, an even more reliable method because this method, you would only be able to like blend images together. So you will have to create like different 
types of image and then put them together, right? There is a second one, which I've just found recently by Paul over here. I'll just put the link in the description as well. You can read it in your own free time. All you need to do is just to get the seed code, right, from GPT. It's really simple, right? Get a seed, just like Meet Journey, they all produces a seed for every image that you generate. So for just for a very quick example, I went back to rerun this coffee table example, right? So a person sitting in the outdoor eatery and so on, right? So I have these four image generated, really cool, really great image generated. I kind of like this Asian lady over here. So I asked for the seed of image one, right? And it tells me the seed is 5,000. So I use the same prompts as Paul, right? Let me show you the first run that I did. So I said, modify image one with seed 5,000, add sunglasses to the person. So I'm using this image, right? I want to add sunglasses onto her. And the results are so fantastic, right? So it generates another lady. So there's one thing to note is that whether you're using Paul or Anu's method, right? Dell E is not going to generate the exact same person, but it will generate someone that is similar, right? So if you see very carefully, it kind of looked like her, but it's not really her. It just added on the sunglasses. The position is changed a little bit, but the clothing are the same. The table, the items on the table has changed up a little bit as well, but it's really close. All right. So in other words, you could use this method to generate an influencer, or for example, an AI influencer, right? So pretty cool. I did a second run. I modify the image, same thing with 5,000 and I add a dog, all right? So this is what it gives me, right? A beautiful Asian lady with all the items on the table and a dog, right? In the back, it's pretty realistic as well. Again, she don't really 100% look like this person, but it's a close replica. Okay, so that's the best that I can find right now for consistency. I will not be able to do exactly the same face unless you're using stable diffusion, which comes with a lot more customization settings functions like control net where you can fix a facial expression and then use it across multiple different types of artwork and if you have enough faces you can even train to create a unique face and you can use this unique face for any angles right so that's the power of stable diffusion it's not something that we can see here in Dell E but that will also mean that stable diffusion have a, a huge amount of learning curve right for Dell E I think it's already very impressive on the generations that it's able to create and also on the prompt accuracy, right? Just consistency is one problem. And then the other problem is there is no post generation customization. So if I were to zoom in this image, I will not be able to say like, I want to fill this area up with flowers. I can't do that, right? There is no generative fill like Mid Journey or Adobe Firefly. You can only copy out the prompt and maybe change up the prompt a little bit so that the next generation could give you something similar, you could only download the image or ask it for the seed ID, right? So that's about it that you can do. There's no other options. You could test out different options like negative prompts in the prompt itself. I haven't tried that yet, but it might work. I might be able to remove this person's shades, for example, right? Or I might remove her shoes. So in Meet Journey, you use the command double dash no, right? In Adobe, they have a section where you can put in negative prompts. Dell E does not have that yet. It might work within the prompt. I haven't tested it. Uh, I might try it out another time. Okay, so this pretty much sums up today's video. Honestly, there's a lot more function in Dell E3 that I might not have come across yet. There's a lot of cool ways to prompt in Dell E on ChatGPT that I've seen a lot of people playing around with, especially on Twitter and Reddit, right? Honestly, I haven't explored that to the fullest extent. I have also not explored a Dell E on Bing chat as well, which you can then push it over to Microsoft Designer to enhance on it or to further customize on it. In the next couple of videos, I might start comparing Dell E against all the AI giants like our Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, Firefly, and so on, right? So do stay tuned for that and stay safe.